Look what I just received. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. It's a proof copy of Delirious Shanghai, the book that me and Viktor Kirillov just published and I'm gonna show you all about how it was done. Stay tuned. Flashback. I live in the 34th floor and I'm walking down the stairs, emergency stairs, because the elevators are broken today. Finally arrived down here. Well, today's your lucky day. Since I am an architect and I have a really good friend here with me, Viktor Kirillov in Shanghai, who is also an architect, and we're gonna write a book about architecture. And here it is. Here he is. <laughs> So Victor was just researching online and he found out that this park building, which was the building we chose to start our book, it was inspired by the Radiator building in, in New York. And it's very similar actually if you look at the facade and the, and the overall volume of the building. But this building was designed by Ladislav Hudek, Hungarian Slovakian architect. And what is interesting, like this building was built in 1934. And at the time all the buildings around it were about four to five stories high. And I am Pei, which is a Chinese born American architect. He used to come to this location to see the construction of the building and to see the growth of it frequently because he could not believe that this building was going to be 24 floors high. And it, it remained as one of the tallest buildings in Shanghai for about 20 to 30 years because Shanghai, after 1934, hibernated. Like that, that's the term historians use. Shanghai hibernated for 20 to 30 years up until the 70s and when that started growing. Before this building got a different meaning because it was overlooking a horse track, a horse, horse track racing track. Right. Now it's just uh, overlooking the park. Yeah, because right in front, uh, Shanghai used to have uh, a race track, which was afterwards converted into a park. And that's why if you look at Shanghai map, you will see uh, a really weird shaped park in the middle of the city. It's weirdly shaped because it was a racehorse track. So we just received our Irish coffees, we're going to drink them and, and that will help loosen our tongues and we'll start criticizing the architecture that had some influence to, to us in the city. And that will eventually turn into a book. Cheers! So unfortunately, we cannot see the vault inside a park hotel, the vault door. Let's run. But from here we have a, a pretty good view of the Park Hotel where we started our journey. All right, down there we have the Century Hotel where we stay, top by the Radisson right behind it. We have been talking a lot about the, um, our experiences in Shanghai and how we interpret the city. And that is mainly the bulk of this book, is about how we, have, how we live this city and how we interact with the city and, and what buildings are important in that interaction. And the next step will be to go to the West Nanjing side of, of the city. We have a lot more of lane houses there, a lot more, it's, it's closer to the French concession. Several days later. So day two of our book quest. We, we had spoken before to do it in two weeks, but maybe three, maybe four, but definitely less than a month. But we are today walking in East Nanjing, one of the main arteries of the city, and we're talking about it and discussing what, what this means to us and the stories that we have related to this. And at the same time, discussing buildings and, and how, how the city evolved. Um, and adapted to this new commerce and this new uh, lifestyle that the China or Shanghai has now. We're gonna continue, we're gonna walk to the Bund and later on we'll show you the results. Cheers! The next morning. Uh, so we're here, this is the last day. This is the last day we're here in uh, the Jetsway, next to the towers. The last day for the book. Oh. For the book. Uh, it's within three or four days, I think, or four meetings. I hope we have covered all the topics. This the last one is going to cover a little bit about Pudong. I'll drop the rest of the footage later when we start editing this text. Yeah, one of the strangest zones of the city. We're close to Yuan Garden. Uh, well, one of the gardens that took longer to build. It took like 60 years or something. Yeah. I remember reading about this. Yeah. And it's right in the center of the city. And 
Part of it is being demolished. We're in one small little alleyway. Most of it is blocked. Part of it is still operational, but you have tourists walking around, Chinese tourists or, or locals walking around and then enjoying the city. It's also one of the, the places where you can see the Fremont skyline. Above, yes. Above the whole... The right, region. right. It's, it's this Very mix. Then we, of course, Delirious Shanghai is going to talk about this, about how how this contrast is very much present in uh, everyday Shanghai, where you can see the up, like the most upcoming, the technological advanced buildings next door to a very traditional Resident. residence and, and culture. So this is pretty impressive. It's sealed, so it's already supposed to be demolished. Really, so. Yeah, most of the doors are, are blocked, as you can see. End of flashback. This is the result of all our hard work and labor. After recording all those conversations, I went to Fiverr.com and I found somebody to transcribe those, those audios into text. And, and that basically is the content of this, of this book. It's all the text, all the conversations that we had, all those stories and all those memories were turned into words. Of course, that would make the book too easy. Uh, we, we took also uh, a lot of time to do the graphic design of the book. We had all the photos that we took during those conversations, during those, those trips around Shanghai were turned into artwork and you can find them inside the book. Uh, there are 40 photos. Photos were all afterwards edited by Victor and you can actually buy them as NFTs. The digital artwork, you're able to buy it in the OpenSea.io. You can be the owner of the only digital version of these photos and of this artwork. So all the editing and all the graphic design was done by us and that took a little bit of more time than we were expecting. Also the preface of the book is written by an open AI text generator. GPT-3. If you search it online, you'll find that the technology has evolved enough for artificial intelligence to be able to provide us with, with actual text that feels like it's a human writing, which is makes it super cool because the, the preface is, is being written by a, by a transformer, basically. When you read it, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, you won't be able to tell the difference between that and, and a person. After we had all those conversations into text, the next step was actually to edit and, and do the graphic design of the whole thing. That took us about a year because now with the distance, me, me living in Luxembourg, Victor living in, in Shanghai, we are both full-time workers, so we, we don't have that much free time to create content, as you can see for the, for the gaps between my videos. <laughs> Nevertheless, one year later, we have the results. We have one hardcover book, uh, one soft cover, and also the digital versions of them in Apple Books and Amazon Kindle. These are really good gifts for architects, for people interested in traveling, people interested in Asia and, and Shanghai even. The Lyris Shanghai is now out, available at Amazon. This will shed a little bit of light over our seven years experience in Shanghai. I hope the book takes you from your reality to into that Asian Shanghai reality. And if you enjoyed it, you enjoyed the book, if if you take a read, I'll drop the links down below. And if you liked it, just don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video.